Hi everyone, Salesforce integration training day nine. Let's see today what we are going to learn. Today we will cover about the XML file, HTTP, how to use the HTTP hypertext market language. HTTP, we will see that. And Salesforce to other system, how can we send the details from the Salesforce to other system? And from other system to Salesforce, how can we do that? Right, so then we will see the, these are the topic which we are going to see. The first one is a XML file. So last session, I have given you the homework. So to implement a XML, right, to implement a integration by using this. So let's do the, the same thing. How can we implement using, how can I implement the integration like a XML? How can I generate an XML with all these details? With all these details, let's go ahead and see that. So developer console, close all, file, new, Apex class, CL underscore, now let's say that I'm, for example, I'm going to build the, whatever the XML I have shown here, so that the same XML I'm going to build it. By using the Apex, I'm going to generate the XML which has an account. And let's say I'm going to build only the account details, at least five account details. So what are the accounts that exist in the system? What are the accounts are there in the system? Let's say, for example, these are the accounts. Right, so I'll just write randomly five accounts. So let's go ahead and implement that. So this is basically, how can I implement a dynamic XML for any object in the Salesforce? So CL underscore XML dynamic dynamic class. So let's take it as an XML dynamic class. Right, so this XML has account, which is a parent node, and then we have a child. Within that, we have an account, name equal to Smita, mobile equal to some data, banking, business equal to banking. So I have a parent node, I have a parent node. In this parent node, there is a child node which is available. There is a child node which is available. And what I'll do is I'll just take an account as a parent, account as a parent. And within that, I'm going to display the child records which are related to account. So this is what I'm going to implement right now. So public class dynamic is XML dynamic. And let me implement the constructor. So I'll be using the visual force. So as soon as the visual force is loaded, I'll be displaying the data. So that's the reason I'm implementing the constructor here, public class name. And within this list of account, list of account, ACC list equal to select name comma phone comma industry from account. I'm directly querying the data that is exist in the sales force. So let's take a limit five. What are the limit five is there? I'll just take those details. Right here, before the limit by, I'll just check whether the phone number is not null. We pick the details where the phone number is not equal to null and industry is not equal to null. Industry is not equal to null. So get this data. Now let me run this in the circle. Query editor, let's see whether I'm getting the output or not. Yes, so these are the data which I'm getting it. So perfect. 
So this is the query. So whatever the output I am getting it, everything I will I will convert into the XML file. Everything I will convert into the XML file. Now in order to convert that, first I need to create a DOM space. I need to create it. DOM dot document doc equal to new DOM dot document. Within this, the first I need to create a node. So let's say XML node. First I need to create a root equal to doc dot create doc dot create root element. root element and now here root element name is accounts and the namespace I'll keep it as a null and as well as the prefix I'll keep it as a null. Right, so this is the root and then Whatever the accounts I'm getting here, account list, each one of them I'll get it and I need to push it into the root. I need to create a chain within this room. So first I need to look through the each account. So I'll look through the for loop, account, a, let's say ACC colon, ACC list, Now, I need to insert the each one of them inside this root. So, what I do is I need to create a node, XML node, branch equal to root dot add chain. Add chain element and the chain element is an account. Chain element is account within this. I need to put a attribute, I need to set the attributes. So how can I set the attributes? Branch, branch dot set attribute. So key comma value. The first key is I'm going to specify here name and name I'm going to get it from acc dot name. Value is acc dot name. Right, so what else I needed in this? So in this I need a name, mobile, business. So let's copy this name, mobile, business. ACC dot home and business is ACC dot industry. ACC dot industry. Now I have inserted all this data within the this what are the branches there I have inserted. Now the next step is what is the error it is giving industry. Now the next step is once this is done then I need to push everything into the string. That means doc dot xml to XML string and this I'll be storing into the a variable called XML string and this XML string I'll declare it on top because this data I need to send it to the visual post public string XML string here and let's say here set and get perfect now I'm going to implement it Visual course. So file new visual course. Let's say this is XML dynamic. XML dynamic. VF underscore XML dynamic. Now here controller. Controller equal to. Now this is my class name. Let's choose that class name. And within that, I have a XML string, XML 
stringing. Perfect. Now let's click on it. Preview. Now it is giving me the output which is similar to the whatever we have seen. So let me go to the notepad. In the notepad. XML and accounts. This is the root. And within that, I have a account is starting from here. Within that, I have added the attributes, name, mobile, business. And also, I have added the five accounts. I have added five accounts, which has a phone and email. So this is our data, right? So that is how the if you want so here it says that account is the root within that you have a account two accounts are there within the second account you have a contact details you have a contact details now if you want to implement this kind of a structure right now we, we are just pulling the account details right now we are just pulling the account details but in case if i want like within this account within this account i wanted to display the certain information contact information i wanted to display now how can we do that for that you need to modify the query as well as the code also we need to modify it so let me implement another apex class here xml dynamic account and contact account and acc and contact so this time I'm going to pull the contact details also. This time I'm going to pull contact details. Now let me check whether I have a contacts or not. Now for that, how can I cross verify this? Now let's click on query editor. Now this is limit pi I'm getting it. Now out of limit pi, so whatever the I have details here in the stream, now within that, I'm writing the inner query. Within this, I'm writing the inner query. So select last name, comma first name, comma email from contact. Let's say where email is not equal to null and first name is not equal to null. Do I have the data? Let's check. It has to be contacts, not the contact. Okay, I have one record, which is under the Salesforce one. Um, let me take the ID. So within this ID, I have a one contact. So let me open this account. So I have a Salesforce one. Within that, I have a contacts one contact is there. Let me add a more contacts to this Salesforce one. We are getting the last name, first name, email, right? Last name, first name, email. It has a last name, first name, and email. Email is also there. So I'll add the account for this also, Salesforce one. And in that case, Salesforce one will have a two contacts. Let me add one more contact to this. Details. Oh, first name, Salesforce email, email is their account. 
Salesforce one. No. Let's go to the run refresh. Now we have it, three contacts which are Right, so now I can see at least three contacts are there for one account. Now, if you want, we can add for the another account also. Right, so let me go to the iterable badge. So let me add few contacts here, few contacts. Iterable badge, oh, so many are there. Let me take this. Okay, this is a triple batch. One, two, let's click on save. Now oh, let me open. This report. And go to the detail section. Now let me add the your account name is iteratable batch 12. Now let me refresh this query. Right. So now out of five, at least two records have a contacts. Now I'm going to take the same query here. I'll take this query. Now let's go to the class. So right now what I'm going to do is we are going to display the account along with that contact details we are going to display. Right, so what I'm going to implement is Based on the button click in the visual course page, I'm going to get the entire data. I'll not be loading on, like whenever the visual course is loaded, I'll not be loading the entire data. So basically I'll be calling the certain information whenever the button is clicked. So in the visual course, I'll implement a button. So on button click, I'll be calling a method. Method name is public void. Let's say that display XML, display XML. This is the method I'll be calling from the visual course. Now oh, here list of account. Now oh, ACC list equal to now exactly whatever this is there. Now within this. Like I'm querying the account along with the contact and querying it, right? So I'll be having a name, phone. These details are there. Limit five. Now let's go ahead and generate the XML for this. I need to implement a account within the account. Display the accounts along with that. Display the contacts as well. For each account, if there are any contact, display the contact as well. So that is the overall scenario here. So for that, how we are going to use it? Like DOM document doc equal to new doc, new DOM dot document. So I'm creating a space here. Now DOM dot XML node root equal to doc dot create root element create root element accounts this is the root and namespace is null prefix is also null namespace is null prefix is also null now for each account for each account i'll look through the account acc colon acc list For each account, DOM dot XML node, I'll create a branch. Branch equal to root dot 
add chained item. Now I'm going to add a chained element. Chained element name is account. Chained element name is account. Account, comma, null, comma, null. This is the chained element. Now branch dot set attributes. So what are the attributes? The same attributes that we have done it. So in the previous, whatever the name, mobile, business, whatever is there, I'm just adding those because it's the same thing. Within the account, I'll be having a name is the attribute, mobile is the attribute, and business is the attribute. Now this is perfect. Now the next step is we need to check if within this account, do I have a contacts or not? Do I have a contacts or not? Now I need to check ACC dot, whatever the contacts is the size is more than that. That means contacts, contacts dot size is greater than zero, is greater than zero. If it is a greater than zero, if it is greater than zero, now what I wanted to implement, I have to implement a contacts. That means I need to first build the node, XML node. This is another branch. This is another branch where it has a contact details. Now this branch too has to be within the branch, right? Branch is now, now here, this is the root. This is the root. Within the root, I have a branch, right? This is one and this is one. And within the branch, I have a another branch which is called as a contact. So this is branch two. Now, what are the branch two? Is there this branch two has to be linked to the branch? Now, branch two has to be created within the branch branch dot add chained item, chained element. Now what is this branch? Contacts is the branch. Contacts, comma, null, comma, null. Now, we have created a branch for this branch. Possible that whenever we are creating the branch, each account can have a one contact or more than one contact more than one contact, right? So whatever the contacts are there, whatever the contacts are there, these contacts I need to look through the each contact. Now for loop, contact, let's say con equal to acc dot contacts. Now each contact I need to look through this. Now let's create a Let's add the child within the branch to. For adding the child within the branch to, I need to create an XML node. Now this is a, let's say this is a branch to check. Branch to check. Branch to dot add child element. Add child element. Contact, comma, null, comma, null. Null, comma, null. Now here within this chained element, I'm going to add the, I'm going to add attributes, set attributes. Let's say here attribute name is first name. And first name, I'm going to get it from con dot, First name, con dot first name. Now B2C dot set attribute, last name, last name. Now what are the last name is there? Con dot last name, con dot last name. And then B to C dot set attribute 
And the last one is email. Email and the value is contact dot email. Contact dot email. Perfect. So right now we are done. For condition, if condition is closed here and for loop is closed here. After that, we need to build a XML string. XML string equal to whatever the so called document is generated, the document dot XML string to XML string. Now this one has to be on top. Let's declare this public string XML string set and the get values. Set and get the values. Now for this, we need to implement the visual force page. So let's implement the visual force page. We have underscore. What are the visual force page name is? Now this is the visual force page and the controller equal to class name. Now within this, now I have a two details. Within I have a two details. Now this whatever the class is there, this method has to be called whenever the button is clicked. Whenever the button is clicked. So what I do is I'll implement a basically I'll go for a page block. Page block and within that I'll implement a page block section. page block section and within this I'm going to add a button apex colon command button and value is let's say that display xml now action I'm going to call the action equal to I'm going to call the method the method name is display xml Right, now that's it. Now let me, now whenever it click on the display XML, whenever it click on the display XML, I wanted to display the information in a text box or a text area. So let me add apex colon input text area for this value equal to, I'm giving you some value here, let's say, dxml and action equal to sorry so this is input text area so for input text area value equal to i need a values from what are the final output is there that final output so display that output here in the input text area and let me increase the space for this. Let's say columns equal to, let's say 80 and rows equal to, let's say 100. Click on save. Now there is an error. Let's add the apex colon form because we are using the input. So apex colon forms. Perfect, let's click on a preview. Now here I have a display XML and I have a text area here. Now let me reduce this. Rows are 100, let me reduce it to 80. Okay, that's okay. Now let's click on this display XML. 
Now, if I click on a display XML, what will happen? As soon as I click on a display XML, it will be called, this method will be called. From this method, we are querying the data and we are building the XML. Now, let's go ahead and display XML. Now, this is the data pulled from the Salesforce and it is displaying the information. It is pulled from the XML and then displaying the data. Converted, it pulled from the Salesforce and it converted to XML and then it is displaying the XML formatted information. Now here the accounts is starting and my account details, it's sending here second account details. Then we have a contacts. Uh, within the second account, I have a contacts within that. This is one contact. Now uh, contacts is ending here. And as well as account is ending here, second account. And this is the third account and fourth account. Within the fourth account, I have a contacts information. Within that, I have a contact. This is the one contact. And this is second contact. Similarly, this is the third one. And finally, we are closing the contacts node as well as account node. I'm closing it. Similarly, accounts, the parent one, I'm closing it. Right, so this is the, this was the overall, the homework which I have given. So this is how we need to implement it. Now this is just an example. In case if you receive this kind of a information or if you want to send this kind of a information to any other system by using the XML, now you need to build this direction. This way you have to put it. This way you have to build it. Now today topic will move on. Today we have a new topic which is called as a HTTP Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Hypertext Transfer Proto Protocol. Now Hypertext Transfer Protocol is it's a also called as a HTTP. It is also called as a HTTP. Now HTTP is a actually an application level protocol for distributed collaborative hyper media information system. So this is a protocol application. I can say this is a protocol application. Now within this protocol application, basically HTTP is nothing but hypertext transfer protocol. Hypertext transfer protocol. And this is kind of a protocol for distributed collaborative hypermedia and informational system. And this one is found in the 1990. This was found in the 1990 for data communication for the world wide web. If I wanted to send any data or I wanted to communicate the data from one system to another system, from one system to another system if I wanted to communicate. So in 1990, it was found that the HTTP was the first one where it is introduced as a data communication for the worldwide web in 1990. Now HTTP is a generic and stateless protocol stateless protocol. Now it is a generic and stateless protocol. Now we will see what is that generic and why it is a stateless protocol. Now I'll give you the examples. I will give you the examples so don't worry about that. Now so here, HTTP is a generic and stateless protocol. That means it can be used for the purpose of, also it can be used for the purpose of extension or a, you want a request method, error records. You wanted to capture the error details. You wanted to capture the error codes or a headers or any other purpose if you wanted to use it in order to capture the details. 
whenever you are receiving some data from the web server or sending the data to the another web server. Now, in case if you wanted to capture the details, we can use the HTTP. Now, HTTP, the concept here itself, I have a web server. I have a web server, which is also called as a HTTP server. And I have another side, HTTP client, which is a web browser, web browser. Now, basically in the browser, whenever client or a developer or a automation, anything which is needing the information from the web server, if in case any data that I needed from the web server, then what we will do is we will send a request message to the web server. The request message will be in the form of HTTP. So from the client, from the web server, if you are sending any data to the web server, we need to send HTTP request message. And once the action is done here in the web server, then it responds back. That means it will give the HTTP response message to the client. It will give the HTTP message to the client. Now, HTTP is a stateless. The reason is it's being the stateless because it's a stateless protocol because the server and the client, whatever the server and the client, server is could be a web server or a HTTP server client means HTTP client or a web browser. So the server and the client are aware that each other, that means they know that each other, but only during the request, whenever the request came to the, came from client to the server, only that time it will be activated. Only that time it will be activated. After the response is sent, after the response is sent to the client, then what will happen after what both, both of them, like a server and a client, both will forget each other. The connection and then remember only the time as soon as the request goes out from the web browser to web server, only that time they will remember, okay, this is the server which I know, or this is the browser I know. As soon as it sends the response back to the browser, immediately it will forget. It, it will forget about each other. So due to this nature of the protocol, neither client nor the browser can retain the information between the different requests across the web pages. So they don't remember each other. That means once I get the information, the connection is established in the HTTP, using the HTTP. So what will happen is, HTTP will only remember whenever the request is sent, then only that time they remember each other. As soon as the response is received either to the HTTP client or the other person, whoever it might be, as soon as the response is received, then immediately they will forget about each other. So that's the reason it is called as a stateless. It is not a constant. Every time it won't be connected with the web browser. And HTTP is a media independent. Media independent. That means any type of data can be sent by the HTTP. It has, it is a kind of a mediator. It is kind of a mediator. So data can be sent by the HTTP as long as both the client and server know how to handle my data and what is the data that I'm dealing with. If server and client, both of them knows that what is the data that I'm dealing with, what is the content that I'm dealing with, if they, if they know that kind of a data, then we can handle using the HTTP. HTTP can handle any type of data, any type of data. Now, again, so first step is user issues the URL from the browser. There is a, something happens on the browser or a automation or any click is happening. As soon as the click is happening, is the second step is it is going to send the request message to the web server. It is going to send the request message to the web server. And server map the URL to the file or under the document. It does some calculation or whatever the documentation has to go through. It will go through all the steps. Once it is done, then the fourth step is it is going to return the response back to the 
HTTP clients. Now the response will be 200. So if it is a 200, that means it is a successful message. If it is not a 200, that means it is a having some issue, either authentication issue or a data issue could be bad request issue or anything, right? So we have a different ports are available like a 201, 400, 401, 501. These are the ports are available, which we have already discussed in the starting. Right, so we have, this is the request which response which came from the web server. As soon as the, we receive, as soon as the client receive the response message, then what they will do is, they will display the data in the browser. First, they will do the formatting of the response. After once the formatting is done with the response, then they will display the data into the browser. So browser formats the response and it displayed. When I say browser formats it, now whatever the logic is written at the back end, that logic will take the response and once the response take the response and it will modify something and it will beautify and whenever the data needs to be displayed, it is going to it will display the data into the browser. So total five steps will happen. Total five steps will happen. Now hypertext transfer protocol. Now it has a three classes. In order to do entire HTTP, whatever the steps we are going to do, it will be implemented using the three classes. All these three classes will be involved in the integration. All these three classes will be involved in the integration. The first one is a HTTP. Second one is a HTTP request. Third one is a HTTP response. Now, HTTP is nothing but it uses the HTTP class. This is the HTTP class to initiate the HTTP request and response. If you want to perform other two classes, then you need to declare HTTP. You need to have a HTTP. Without declaration of this class, you cannot perform any of this. So it has to be three classes has to be combined together. Now, HTTP we use it in order to initiate the initiate an HTTP request and a response. Now, HTTP request is nothing but we use the, in case if you want to send the HTTP request class to the program, medically to create a HTTP request like get, post, patch, put, delete are there. So get means I'm getting the data from different system to the sales post. Post means I'm posting it. Post means I'm posting it. Post means I'm posting the details. Right, so get means I'm getting the information from other system to the sales force. Post means we are posting to the another system. Now, patch means partial information. I'm applying the partial data. I'm applying the partial data here. Partial data, like a values or some patch we are applying. On top of it, some patch is getting applied. Put means both. That means whether edit or create, both of them I'm going to get delete. Then we have a HTTP response. HTTP response is nothing but use the HTTP response class to handle the HTTP response. What are the response I'm getting from the web server? To handle that response, we use the HTTP response. We use the HTTP response. Now, let's move on. Now, HTTP, within the HTTP, we have a methods. One is a send method, which is used to send an HTTP request and returns the response. Second one is to string. Second one is to string. Now, to string is returns a string that displays and identify the object properties. 
Now we have a three methods. Out of these three, we have a three classes. Now these three classes, HTTP class, HTTP request, and HTTP re response. And for HTTP class, we have a two methods, send and the two string method. Send and two string method. Whereas HTTP request is having a, there are multiple methods which are available in the HTTP request. Like mostly we use a set end point where we are going to pass the end point here and set compressed flag. Now, if it is a true, that means if the flag is true, then the data in the body is delivered to the end point. Right in the compressed format, we are going to deliver the data to the third party system. Like a zip file, we are going to deliver the data. If it is not a true, if it is a false, then we will not be doing that. And then we have a set body. So within this, we are going to pass the information of the body. Like this, there are so many methods within the HTTP request. Now, if you go to this particular URL, So we have a request to get body, get body as a blob. Blob means this is for an attachment, get body document. Like if you have a DOM document, like an XML, then we use the get body document, get compressed, right? So get endpoint, get header, get method. So many methods are there. So mostly we hardly use it. Maximum three or four methods in the real time. So we will see that. So example here for this, what are the HTTP request is there? For that, let's see one example. Now HTTP request will have a get post, get post. So get example is HTTP request, request equal to new HTTP request. Now here, this is the initialization. I'm doing the initialization HTTP request request equal to new HTTP request. Now request dot set endpoint. I'm setting the endpoint here. Endpoint is Flipkart. Flipkart is the endpoint. Now set method. Method is get. That means I'm going to get the information inside the Salesforce. Right? This is how we write the get. Get for the HTTP request. If it is a post, Post example, HTTP request, request equal to new HTTP request. This is the initialization. Every time whenever we are writing the any data which we are sending it or getting the information or posting it, whatever we are doing it, right? So it has to be, so it has to be always initialize the HTTP request. You we need to initialize it. Once we have initialized it, take this object name, and that object name dot set endpoint. Now here I'm passing the endpoint of the ICSA bank where I'm passing the details to the new customer. Now I'm going to set method post. We are going to post the new customer information. I'm going to post the new customer information within the sales board. Get means I'm just getting the details. I'm just getting the details. Post means from the sales force, we are posting the details to the another or sending the details to the another system. We are posting it. We are posting it. Similarly, we have a HTTP response. HTTP, HTTP response is get body, get status, get body document. And get body is basically it returns the content in the response, whatever the response we are receiving it, the content will be returned. We can retrieve it and the status, what are the response we are receiving the response, whether that response is a valid or not, 200 or a different status, what is the status, successful or a failure, what is the status. Get body document, if it is a DOM document, then we are going to get the information. So for this one also I have given the link, there are so many methods are available. Now, example for this HTTP response, let's assume that post. I'm posting some data there. I'm posting customer details. 
right? So by using the HTTP request, I'm posting it. Once I have posted the details, now I have to get a response. Our response has to be HTTP response, response equal to new HTTP response. Now here string status equal to response dot get status, response dot get status code. Whatever the status is there, whether it is a 200 or whether it is a uh, 401, whatever the status code is there, I'm getting the status code and storing the status code into the status. And then string body, string body or equal to response dot get body. I'm getting the details, whatever the response I'm receiving from the third party system or a other system, whatever the content is there, I'm getting the details and storing into the body. Now, this is how we get the response. In order to get the response, you have to do the request. You, without request, you cannot do the response. HTTP, HTTP request, HTTP response, all three of them should be together. All three of them should be to together. Now, remote set settings, uh, we will see tomorrow. Like in order to implement a HTTP, if I'm calling any third party system, then we have to first place that inside the remote side settings that we will do tomorrow. Okay, so that's all for today.